to Jerusalem Studio. Amid regional efforts to fully implement the Egyptian-brokered-Palestinian reconciliation bid, Israel finds itself challenged in its efforts to maintain deterrence vis-à-vis -vis the Islamist organizations in the Gaza Strip and its interest in maintaining stability in the Palestinian enclave that ultimately contributes to the national security of the State of Israel. To further discuss this challenge, I'm joined here in the studio by Dr. Amira Halperin, who is a research fellow at the Hebrew University's Truman Institute. I'd like also to welcome our TV7 analyst, Mr. Amir Oren, and Colonel and Reserve Dr. Reuven Belko, who is a columnist at the Israel Hayom Daily. Welcome. Mr. Oren, give us a broader understanding of the current chain of affairs. For most of the 10 years since Hamas took over uh, the Gaza Strip by force in June of uh, 2007, Israel has looked uh, at Gaza and uh, at the uh, civilian population there mostly through a military, a strict military and uh, security perspective. But uh, more recently, especially under the influence of the coordinator of uh, government activities in the territories, General Poli Mordechai, a new approach uh, has been signaled by Israel, whereby the welfare of the population is the most significant factor because it has a bearing on the uh, intra-Palestinian relationship, Hamas versus uh, Fatah or versus the Palestinian Authority, and because it's a safety valve, and if it is not uh, open, uh, the conflagration which Israel and Hamas do not want uh, could very well take place. Dr. Halperin, how do you perceive this? I will continue from what you said. I read today in Hamas website that they are talking about I mean, the humanitarian issues are really emphasized this issue, and they say that this um, issue hasn't been resolved yet. There is a problem of cutting uh, electricity, et cetera. And they say that even though there is a reconciliation efforts, this situation hasn't been changed yet. Dr. Belko? Well, I would, uh, just for the uh, discussion, even though I think so, I would object these ideas by saying, first of all, that uh, indeed the government of Israel uh, take really uh, uh, care about what's going on in Gaza Strip out of the idea that if civilians are happy, everybody is happy. This is theoretical, theoretically a good idea, and even Minister of, of uh, Transportation, Israel Kass, offered to build a new port for the Gazian by an artificial island. Uh, it, this is not something that you could uh, relate to a general here and there. This is a policy of the government of Israel. But unfortunately, there are two interpretations to such a situation. One is when civilians are not happy, they put the pressure on the government of Hamas to change. Hamas plays a role of a government, not only as a military organization. So it's not that easy to force Hamas to change its ideology and the way they act from military system to a civilian one. And now that they are in pressure from the Egyptian side, from the Gulf side, from Israeli side by deterrence and by Palestinian authority, they do not send the support they got used to. This is a new situation. I'm not sure that by openness and uh, all other policies that has been just mentioned, this should play uh, an important role on changing the equilibrium in Gaza. On the contrary, sometimes I think that mainly after the uh, tunnel event, in which in the midst of the reconciliation process, they tried to penetrate into Israel and to kidnap and do a terror activity. That's why I believe the solution or the policy is not that sure to ease on the uh, population of Gaza because it might create a counter-production uh, react. Obviously, we'll touch base on the various challenges at hand, militarily speaking, but Mr. Oren, it is obvious uh, that the Islamist Hamas organization came forward to the reconciliation bid with efforts in order to alleviate pressure on the Gaza Strip, which obviously challenges its leadership on the Palestinian enclave in various constellations. Uh, give us more of an understanding on that part. Well, there are givens in this equation. Um, and um, there was a study uh, done recently by the Israeli government. They tried to compare what happened in the Gaza Strip uh, in 1970, and they tried to project what is happening today 
two or three years into the future to 2020, 50 years between 1970 and 2020. In 1970, there were less than 400,000 um, Palestinians in Gaza, both uh, inhabitants and refugees, 380,000 to be exact. In 2020, there will be more than 2 million, 2.13 million Palestinians there. The unemployment rate is more than 40%, and in the youth group, age group, it's uh, even more, 60% or more. And the question is, what do you do about this powder keg uh, or, or a pressure cooker? What, what do you do? Uh, how, how do you um, uh, take care of it so that uh, the population uh, will not, out of frustration, uh, push Hamas to act against Israel, and when they analyze, or push Hamas out. On the contrary, perhaps. But but um, uh, having analyzed the implications, the lessons of the last campaign, which was waged three years ago, Operation Protective Edge, the Israeli government decided, and it is true that uh, it is not just one single general, but this particular general is pushing the policy. They decided to no longer look at it as if there are only six Hamas brigades, and as they say, seven smaller Islamic Jihad brigades, but rather two million people. And how uh, do you take care of their welfare for Israel's own good, not only because of some uh, humanitarian feeling, but in order uh, for everybody to gain out of it, everybody meaning the two sides of the Palestinian community, both the West Bank under the Palestinian Authority and Gaza under Hamas, at least for now, and Israel. And for the time being, it seems to work because for more than three years, there has been no rocket launched by Hamas, but only by rogue organizations. Uh, Dr. Halper, in talking about the reconciliation bid, uh, putting aside all the declarations by the State of Israel with regard to its invalidity as long as the Islamist Hamas organization continues to call and actually pursue the destruction of the State of Israel. Do you believe that Israel perceives this reconciliation bid as a positive move that would eventually uh, contribute to Israel's security and at large also to maybe peacemaking in the future? This is what, as I say in Israel, in different ways, and the Egyptians say, for example, the Egyptian, the government, they say that this reconciliation, the inner reconciliation within the Palestinian Authority will obviously contribute to the peace process with Israel. I think that the Israel prime minister says it's very differently. He says basically that He's very aggressive. His opinion is very clear about it. The terrorism must stop. There is no other way. And therefore, it's a very dif um, difficult to achieve the, the reconciliation between them um, as, a, as a factor that will influence on the peace process unless this uh, terrorism will stop. And I think that if you speak about Hamas and Fatah, both of them, they want to um, actually to act as, a, as an um, active uh, people and factors in the peace negotiations, and therefore Hamas want to show that he is part of it, but it's very difficult for this movement to do so because it's a terrorist organization. Dr. Belko? Well, uh, from the outside point of view, one might think that uh, the Palestinians are going positively towards an agreement or reconciliation, but actually it goes on the, others, the other way around. Uh, I believe that those sides, Hamas out of a, a dead end that they have been found themselves lately, and Fatah just because they want to justify one government, one, one, one decision, etc. the story of the image uh, towards the Americans and the Europe, they insist on creating this understanding, even though everybody knows that after the uh, bad blood that has been uh, in the slaughters and the fact that Hamas used to throw the uh, heads of uh, Fatah from high roofs down to their death and shoot them, uh, there cannot be a, a reconciliation practically. And more than this, and I believe this is the most important thing every student on BA uh, in political science know, that the one who hold monopoly on power, on arm, is the one who govern. So if you look seriously and listen carefully, to what uh, is said in Hamas' part, and leave aside the story whether they manage terrorism against uh, Israel or not, they are deterred for the time being. 
but the story, do they intend to go ahead in peace and deliver the weapons into the hands of the government? This can never happen. This will never happen. So story, uh, speaking about reconciliation is a fake news. We used to call these things fake story. It can never happen. As to your question whether the Israeli government would prefer to face one head, one decision, one weapon, of course, if you deal with a peace process, you would like to speak to an entity with, with one head and one, le one tongue and one mouth and one weapon, so you can face it. But unfortunately, in the story of Palestinian Authority, Palestinian Authority and Hamas and other uh, organizations are not under discipline of any of them, this is something that cannot happen. Mr. Olin, nevertheless, we are uh, faced here in a situation where uh, the Gaza Strip has uh, uh, been a challenge for Israel for quite some time now, and just recently tensions have risen with regard to the Islamic Jihad and this uh, attack tunnel that was identified and destroyed by the Israeli armed forces in order to uh, thwart and, of course, deter the Palestinian organizations attempting to establish those kind of tunnels for future conflagrations with Israel. Uh, do you believe that Israel is trying to, on the one hand, establish itself uh, militarily on the border and signaling to those Islamist organizations that it will not uh, accept for any kind of uh, infiltration into Israel, be it through uh, tunnels or through rockets, and at the same time signals also it's a uh, hope, at least, to maintain a, a relative peace? Israel is walking a very fine line uh, between trying to put off the next war or the next operation for as long as is possible, and uh, in uh, conducting such operations which will stop the uh, organizations in Gaza from uh, getting more power and prepare and better prepare for this war. Because if you attack <laughs> such a tunnel, you may escalate, but uh, by the same token, you may put off the operation. So um, you are never really uh, certain how it's going to come out because, for instance, in this case, um, uh, not too many people among those uh, engineers who were in the tunnel uh, were killed, but those who came to their rescue were killed and uh, senior figures in the Islamic Jihad movement. So that caused much of the uh, uh, revenge, uh, many of the calls for, for revenge. But uh, all in all, Israel is very cautious. And as for what is happening on the other side of the border, it is very easy and perhaps natural to assume that what we have seen in the past will also happen in the future. But there are uh, several uh, factors which have changed. For instance, the street, what we used to call the Arab street or the Palestinian street, uh, public opinion is now more important um, in their uh, influence on the um, decisions of Hamas and social media and other manifestations of what the younger generation wants, both uh, Hamas as well as Israel, are now taking notice of this new phenomenon. Dr. Alperin, Egypt has been also a key factor in maintaining the quiet or relative quiet between Israel and, e uh, and the Gaza Strip. Do you believe that its contribution has also assisted in maintaining the current state of affairs where the Islamist organizations are reserved from uh, directing their weapons towards Israel in an active manner? Yes, of course, there are a political interest, and we know that Egypt um, intervention actually help uh, all the sides in this um, uh, reconciliation process. But uh, if we continue what we said earlier, I think there are another few main problems. One of them, is, as we talked about, is terrorism, but the other issue is also the settlements and the problem of the Jewish land. Uh, we see that Mahmoud Abbas said that uh, Israel... Uh, the, the Israeli government, they don't want the reconciliations, they don't want the peace process, but rather they want to continue with settlements. Um, we see that uh, in the U.S. there is a new attitude now talking about the whole issue of, for example, moving the embassy to Jerusalem in order to demonstrate the link of the Jewish people to its land and uh, to make the Palestinian people actually admit in this. And this, we are not there yet because they still believe that it 
this area, the Israeli um, area, the territory is not a Jewish land. Well, uh, Dr. Belko, I suspect you disagree with that statement. I would say, uh, first of all, that the story of settlements that occurs in uh, West Bank, Israel does not mean to re build more settlements, but to strengthen the ones who are existed. So there is not a major change in the policy of Israel for the time being. Of course, Israel expects for the new government of Trump for changes, as you mentioned, uh, truly, the story of the embassy, it's time to fulfill it. But as for Hamas organization, I don't believe that they are influenced of the from the story of settlements here and there. After all, Israel is a big settlement that should be removed as for the Hamas point of view. So they, they, no, no meaning is to the question whether there is a new settlement here or there. But I believe that the main point in this story is not only the new circumstances in which Hamas is uh, founding itself, not only because Qatar is surrounded, not only because there's no flood of money, not only because even Iran finds itself in difficulties by supplying money and uh, uh, ammunition and weapon, yeah, and still does. And even Hassan Nasrallah, a, a, a day before yesterday, admitted more than that, were proud, he was proud to, to say that he supplies weapons to Hamas. So we found ourselves in one of the frontiers of Iran in this area by supplying uh, a, a, the missiles of Kornet. How, how do you call it? Kornet. And Kornet. 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 So this is something to be emphasized. The other story, and we neglected it almost, is the new Israeli measures to prevent the penetrating of uh, tunnels into the Israeli side. And in the story of the last tunnel shows that Israel has developed abilities that Hamas found itself embarrassed by the new abilities and by mystery, a lot of, of tunnels has been collapsed without any rational explanation in the Palestinian side. They have found a lot of spies in their own rows working for Israel. And they all, and more than this, the Israelis are now building a very huge, strong barrier between the Israelis and Hamas. So in combination to all these uh, circumstances and developments in the global uh, point of view in which Hamas is considered an a, a terror organization, not only by the West or others, but also by the uh, Arab states, Hamas must find a way out. And these developments force Hamas to go towards a Palestinian authority. Mm -hmm. But the only obstacles that I believe and predict that will stay there and without any ability to move it will be the handling of Hamas military abilities to the hands of PNO, Palestinian uh, Authority. And that's why this story is, you know, only a cover story. Well, uh, Mr. Oren, obviously the Palestinian Authority has its uh, interests in the Gaza Strip to maintain a unified voice towards the international community, which grants it the legitimacy to continue to govern the Palestinian people uh, at large. But uh, when we're looking on the ground, uh, I've had the opportunity to speak with uh, some people in the Gaza Strip this week who talked about the transfer of power from the Islamist Hamas organizations who've left the Rafa border crossing on uh, the Egyptian border and granted the Palestinian Authority's uh, security uh, uh, establishment to enter and take an over this uh, uh, border following certain uh, altercations between the two sides. Uh, Hamas militants have thwarted all kind of people from reaching the border, which have pretty much disrupted the the flow of uh, people going from the Gaza Strip towards uh, Egypt and vice versa. But we do see some kind of a strategic value to this uh, understanding between Hamas and Fatah. And now we also hear from uh, Egypt, from Cairo, where talks are ongoing this week, that the uh, blood feud between the various factions within, or families, if you will, within the Palestinian community are trying to resolve their differences and their significant hate between each other after killing each other's uh, family members. Now, by the means of finance, they're able to alleviate the pressure on those families and try and reconcile 
on a, a, a strategic level that would allow both sides to actually resolve their differences. Do you believe that all those different actions that we're hearing about, will they bring about a true solution that would initiate one unified Palestinian body? The chances for uh, reconciliation um, are now uh, better than uh, they uh, ever were uh, for the last uh, 10 years. But of course, it's not certain because there are counter pressures as well. Uh, perhaps uh, the most important factor would be the militant wing of uh, Hamas under Yahya Sinwar. We don't really know yet what their interest uh, is. Uh, up to now, they have maintained the momentum of the reconciliation, but they may try to stop it when it gets to the core issues, for instance, of what is going to happen to their arsenal. But up to now, for the last uh, month or two, uh, they have been surprisingly moderate. You can't predict just because of that that they will remain uh, pragmatic, but it seems so, and uh, you are- Is this moderation a calculated action? It appears so because the overriding calculation, uh, as Dr. Halperin mentioned, is the Trump administration's peace plan, which is yet to uh, be unveiled. And all of the parties in the Middle East want to remain on Trump's good side, at, at least until he shows uh, his cards. And uh, because of that, you also heard earlier this week the Saudi foreign minister uh, stating that the only condition that uh, Saudi Arabia is putting for the uh, next move in the peace process is having two states with Jerusalem as the capital of the Palestinian state, and all the rest is to be left to negotiations between the Palestinians and Israelis, refugees, borders, security, and all the other issues that have long blocked the, the uh, advancement of the peace process, which means that, that uh, both Mahmoud Abbas, who, who is uh, personally um, very hostile towards um, uh, Hamas, and uh, has put in um, very forceful sanctions against Gaza, which uh, have yet to be lifted. And uh, Sinwar and the other Hamas leaders, for the time being, want to try and find a reconciliation formula which will let the Palestinian Authority represent Hamas without Hamas recognizing Israel. Now, uh, of course, it's trying to, to uh, uh, square the circle. It is very, very difficult to find such a formula. But for the time being, they try to, to uh, make progress without um, letting, without torpedoing the entire process. Well, obviously, when they're talking about Jerusalem, they're talking about the old city of Jerusalem and uh, Jerusalem the Temple Mount, uh, where uh, both biblical temples once stood, and today, of course, the Al-Aqsa Mosque is located there. Uh, Dr. Halpin, when we're talking about uh, Saudi Arabia and its significant role, obviously, in this uh, American bid to bring about a certain plan that should or uh, would present a viable solution in the eyes of the international community to the decades-old Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Do you believe that the Saudis are in control of uh, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, who seems to have close ties also with uh, the King of Saudi Arabia as well as the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman? And uh, if you could also touch base on the reports that Saudi Arabia has demanded from the Palestinian Authority to accept the American uh, uh, peace plan that will be presented uh, quite soon. At least we know that uh, in the next 90 days, for sure, this peace plan should be presented. Uh, do you believe that uh, this demand will actually uh, come back to President Abbas in a favorable attitude towards it? I'm skeptical in 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 a, in a nutshell. I'm skeptical about the whole process because the previous experience we saw that even when uh, Qatar intervened and Egypt and Saudi, the results were not um, the results were not good. I mean, um, at the moment the problem is that um, when we talk about uh, Hamas and Fatah and, and the peace uh, process. Um, even if you read the media outlets of Hamas and Fatah, you know that they've been rivals since um, a long time ago. And the last experience in, 20, in 2014, uh, there were no, uh, no, you know, no results at all. So um, 
I, I think that Saudi Arabia intervened if Mahmoud Abbas on the surface, of course, he will take it and he will try to promote this. But I believe that his um, interest, his political interest will dominate the, the political decision. Even at the yeah. cost of a resignation as they demand his resignation if he doesn't accept it? Yeah, because I don't believe that the situation is as far as I can see it. And when, when I speak with the people and I read what they write uh, and when you learn from previous experience, yes, I think this is, a, I mean, I would be surprised otherwise, but I hope so. Dr. Belko, how do you look at the regional approach that the Trump administration is taking? Do you believe that this will substantiate some kind of uh, foundation in order to implement a viable solution? Uh, look, this is very smart to look at the past and judge about the present and future, but uh, something has occurred lately that sh we should take into account. The aggressive uh, steps that has been made by Iran lately is something that changed totally the equation in the Middle East at all. And by this, you can understand even the ch dramatic changes by this, that has been taken by Saudi uh, Arabia regime inside, outside, towards the Palestinian uh, problem. It comes out now very, very clearly that Palestinian problem is negligible in the story of the Middle East. And actually, it's never been. It was artificially introduced as if the Palestinian solution will create everlasting peace in the Middle East. The real story is the Palestinian problem has never been the problem of the uh, uh, restless in the Middle East. And here, it, by these days, it comes out very clearly. In Saudi Arabia is now preparing for the combat against Iran. The Arab uh, Gulf states are very, very much uh, happy uh, for the time being secretly to have Israel in the same handak, in the same tunnel of war in the coming uh, or predicted uh, conflict against Iran. And that's why we could hear from Saudi side even willingness to, uh, to, to make Jerusalem international and the demand of the Palestinians to, to cancel the idiotic idea of the right of return. These are the conditions I have heard about coming from the Saudi side. So we should judge the, the coming uh, uh, events and uh, developments by the new threat on the Middle East coming from Iran. Well, maybe it doesn't have uh, any impact on regional uh, peace or stability, but it does have an impact uh, directly or indirectly on the ability of Israel to normalize relations with its Arab neighbors. Mr. Oren, we're drawing near to the end of the program. Last sentence. Uh, the uh, Palestinian people uh, will not be dictated to. And even though it looks in, in other capitals as if a formula can be found, they have to give their consent. Well, this is all the time that we have for today. So I'd like to thank Dr. Halperin, Mr. Oren, and Dr. Belko for coming here today. And I'd like to thank our viewers as well. And we will see you next time. TV7 Israel's mission is to give you, our viewers, truthful information, which in effect will give you a chance to really understand what is happening in Israel and its region. If you are blessed by our programs and believe our mission to be important, we urge you to support us and become a voice for Israel. You can support us by going to our website at tv7israelnews.com. This program was made possible through your donations.